This is The Game Show Guy. My name's Ryan, and today we're checking out one of my favorite games, one of my easiest games. You're gonna love it too. It's called Frazzle. All right, what is Frazzle? Well, Frazzle is loosely based off of uh, uh, a classic 70s and 80s uh, television game show called $100,000 Pyramid or $25,000 Pyramid or Dick Clark's, but anyway, Pyramid, now run by Michael Strahan. It is a fun game, and the basic essence of the game is, is that um, this is sort of the opposite of, Je of Jeopardy. This is the, uh, instead of, I'm, as a teacher, gonna ask you a question and give me the answer, now we just, uh, invert that. I'm going to give you the answer, and then now you need to be able to tell somebody what it is. And I'm going to take myself out of the equation. It's just going to be one student's going to have to tell the other student what that what that is. Some people get this confused with password. Password is similar, but password is one word. You know, you would have to say like chewing, and the person would say gum. Like that's one word password. This would be like, oh, this is that uh, thing that you put if you want. Uh, it's like mint flavored, and you can move your mouth up and down, and oh, chewing gum, something like that. So th this one, you're gonna you want to be able to really get your let your kids know that they want to be able to talk a lot and give as many clues as they can. Anyway, uh, let me show you what this thing ultimately looks like. So, hop in over here. Here is what this uh, Frazzle game. Uh, it's going to look like. Uh, Frazzle I have built here in PowerPoint. Frazzle is one of the few games that works almost identical in any platform that you use, PowerPoint or Google Slides, um, because of its simplicity. The only I I issue that we're going to have is the timer, and let me show you how that's ultimately going to work. So here's uh, uh, my Frazzle game. Like I mentioned, uh, I mentioned in all the games, down here at the bottom, you're going to see a list of all of the uh, the fonts that are needed, and those fonts you uh, are going to need to be able to download and install, and that'll give you that look and feel that it's intended to. So those are the fonts that are, that are there. Anyway, and so uh, let's walk you through the basics of the thing. So if I put the uh, in the slideshow mode, the game comes up like all my games game pops up and you should just have a little of music that's playing right now and the game's called Frazzle and I've heard the song before. Anyway, that's one of my favorite little jingles that I found for this one. So there's Frazzle, I call it the game of, uh, the, uh, the game of getting the words just right. Next slide is going to take you to the game subject or classroom edition is what I have. And so from here, I recommend you write what's on there. And so you, let me hop out of there. So let's say if I'm going to be doing the subject here, double click that. And I'm going to call this, we're doing rocks. Pretend this is a science class. And so um, then I jump to the next one. And so the way in which that these uh, are built here is that round one, I, you could have as many rounds, but there's going to be seven terms or words that you're going to be able to use. These are people, these are uh, vocabulary words, places, things like that. They could be uh, one word, they could be a couple words, but I wouldn't go beyond two or three words for your compound stuff. Um, and then you can theme your round, theme your round if you would like. So, like if I did want to say, if I'm doing rocks, I could do vocab words, uh, vocabulary. Or if I was doing, let's say, uh, in social studies, I was doing the Civil War. I could do have one be people of the Civil War, battles of the Civil War, so they can kind of understand those. Um, all right, let me show you the magic. Here is the uh, the magic slide. The slide is gonna be able to have, I'm gonna put the term in here where it says click to add title. And then once this uh, the slide comes up, the kids are gonna have 20 seconds to try to be able to get the others to be able to, to, be able to say um, and put those in. So let me click here, I'm gonna go here, start putting my uh, terms from this in. I'm gonna say igneous, that's a hard word to spell. Igneous is a word that we've learned about rocks. Go to the next slide, and the next slide, the same thing is just gonna come here. I have um, seven per round, and you can change them, but seven's a pretty good number here. So I'm gonna go meta, more, thick rock, and then I'm gonna say more than just the types of rocks. Oh, we talked about the minerals that are in rocks, and how about this one, uh, uh, erosion. Anyway, so those are just my single words. Let me show you how this works. Let's jump back to the very beginning here, and let's take a look at Frazzle. Hey everybody, we're playing ourselves Frazzle, and we finished our unit here all about science, and that's why I want to find out what you guys know about rocks. Oh, my timing was good on that. Did you see that? Because I've heard the song before. Anyway. Um, and here, everybody, we're doing our round one vocabulary words based off of the rocks that we've learned about in this unit. All right, so I'm gonna tell you how to divvy the teams up or whatever. All right, team number one, are you ready? 
And now this is how this is gonna work. The sound effects means a new word is gonna show up. One student will be looking forward, another one will have their back to the, uh, to the other ones, and they have that timer, the 20 seconds to be able to get them. Oh, this is, yeah, this is one of the types of rocks, uh, the type of rocks where um, um, it is where they, uh, and they kind of struggle with the time. It's kind of neat being able to see the timer tick down. It creates a level of stress for them. If they get it, Let's say here, once they get it and they go, this is one of the type of rocks, igneous. Okay, great. Then you just click forward. It'll drop the timer down, click again, do it really quick if you're a little clicker, and then the next one comes up. And then the kids can kind of give their clues and that sort of stuff. If, the, if it gets to the bottom, it doesn't automatically move. Gives you the ability, you as the teacher, to have some time to... Uh, uh, fudge the numbers a little bit, and if they're close, uh, be able to give them a few more. With, which, by the way, let everybody know that if they are, hmm, you're gonna be working with kids, and so if you don't mind, um, uh, be careful with the, uh, uh, the, the rules that you have regarding this. And so when the uh, uh, kids are gonna call you and question you about like, hey, the timer's up, so you really need to be able to give them a heads up beforehand to be able to say, hey guys, listen, I'm running the game. I'm the one in charge here, so um, don't question my rules or my authority. You kind of want to be able to be careful about that. Okay, so once that's finished, you can see the next one comes up from here to the next and so forth like that. So let me hop back out of here and be able to show you what um, um, how the game is going to be ultimately played. Once I get to the seventh one of these, if you notice, they're all the exact same, but on the very bottom one on the seventh here, there's a button right here, and that button says back. That back button is going to basically tell you, take you back to the start of the round. Okay, let me show you what that looks like here. So once I get back down to here, what I want is I want this. Uh, I want another group of kids to play the exact same terms. So by clicking here, it's going to take me back to the start of round number one for vocabulary. That way, I can bring the next group in, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how we can rotate those out. Okay. Okay, so now well, you've played your rounds. I like to do them into three. And th your job as the teacher is kind of neat is that you're really hands off. I'm not asking questions. I'm not, if they're wrong, uh, let them go. They get super creative. My basically only rules are like, don't say starts with, rhymes, uh, starts with a certain letter or rhymes uh, or, or give words that it rhymes with. You know, uh, here's kind of, let me show you a picture of what it kind of looks like a little bit as they're playing. You can see here, this is an example that I've done in a PD workshop. I have one person given a clue, another person with their back to the clue. And also really important over here in the back is that you have a scorekeeper. Have that scorekeeper, I just do basically a column. Here's what the column looks like. Team one, team two, team three. And just have the person just do tally marks along the way. Every time that they get one, they give themselves a, ta uh, they give them a tally mark. Um, the reason I like doing the exact same terms is for fairness. So so kids don't go, oh, hey, you know, your round was much easier. Uh, and then also what you're really getting here as a teacher is you're getting uh, feedback. You'll realize as you've done three rounds of this, like the kids struggled with igneous. Like they were good with minerals and they were good with erosion. So it gives me the opportunity to be able to see multiple times how successful they are or they aren't as they're as they're creating these. So like I said, your job is just to make these seven for, for one round. Then once all of them have gone through, instead of clicking the back button, now you're gonna go to the next one that says um, answers. And when I get to the answers, all I want you to do on these slides is, I just changed the background from yellow to blue. Now what you're gonna do here is just repeat and put those words in again. So here's Igneous again. Now, as I'm playing the game, when I get to this spot, hey everybody, now I, I, I bring things down a little bit and say, hey everybody, hey, great job. Let's see, team number one, you got five, team number two, you got four, and team number three, you guys got six out of seven, good job. Uh, now let's talk about those uh, the words that we covered. So I was having fun up here, and we're good, good times and laughing or whatever, then, now it's time for the answers and I'm gonna bring them back in. And what's neat here is when I get to that, let's say they struggle with igneous, and I'm like, okay guys, igneous, uh, only one of you got it, two of, you, two of the teams struggled with it. This is your opportunity to do a little reteaching. I could be able to say, oh, gotcha, all right. So who can remember whatever, maybe have some kids and some kids wanna be able to say, oh, I remember what it is. I can do some reteaching at that moment and all that sort of stuff too. Uh, another thing that you can be able to do within here is these are just text. When I get to, let's say metamorphic was this one, right? Metamorphic on that. Now what I can go do is go to the internet and go find me a picture, all right? Let me get a picture that I've already pre-done here, copied real fast. Go find me an example. So right here, when I have metamorphic on there, 
if I could spell it correctly, um, I could do something like this, push that off to the side and put the picture over here. And so then, because I'm gonna anticipate, I may need to reteach this one, or I may wanna have a visual to be able to go with it. So the answer slides gives you a lot of ability. Or instead of the image, I could, um, you could put up a, a preset follow-up question. Why is this, or uh, how were these rock formations formed, or something like that. And I can have those uh, set up ahead of time so they'll know the kind of follow-up I wanna get. So this is what the be best part I will love about Frazzle. It's teach and have fun, bring it back and review. Really kind of like the traditional review game. In essence, that's Frazzle. It is seven uh, questions, seven per round, and you, lo and you line up your kids uh, to be able to stand and do their thing like this here. And uh, there you go. Now, if you want to be able to mix it up, like I put in the directions, some of the kids may struggle. Some kids are really nervous about being on the spot. So instead of one to one, what if I did two clue givers and two clue, clue senders? And that also gets more people participating. Usually I would say a decent, an average, not going too crazy, is to do three rounds. That's seven terms. And that gives me three, six, nine times three. Hey, I got 18 kids playing right there. Uh, I can um, do multiple clue guessers and centers. So you're gonna get, bit, basically everybody's gonna have an opportunity to be able to play um, and such. So I, like I said, I really like the three, uh, three rounds. It's a good little uh, flow for the game as well too. I've also, I've not done it personally. I've had a, a couple of teacher friends of mine and they have had them all play at the same time. They'll do like, hey, for the third round, I'm gonna stand behind them and I'm gonna have the same word up and they're all going and it's just pandemonium. Three teams playing at the exact same time and then the first one to be able to get it, they go, go, oh, team one gets it, team two got that one and they move on. It's a little bit more hectic. I should maybe try it sometime, but anyway. And so that in essence is the frazzle piece. Now, some of you may be thinking, uh, wait, where do the two questions that I get often is, where do the kids go um, when, let's see, team one's playing where do the other ones go? I have them step outside. I teach at a high school here and they can just step right outside um, and I can kind of trust them a little bit. Uh, your kids you may not trust or they may be too young or it may be other issues. And so um, a couple different ways that you can do, you could set up a separate area and have some headphones on that they can, you can have some music playing if they can't see. Uh, another option is you simply can just change the, uh, have more terms and such. So, and then the other one that people have mentioned is the timer. Like it's not, uh, it's too stressful. And I will agree, I have played Frazzle and gotten rid of the timer and had tons of fun as well too. And so I put right here, if you wanna remove the timer, you can't delete it, I've hidden it from you. And it's kind of a neat thing in, in PowerPoint. If I go to view and go to slide master, allows me to see the background. It's kind of more than the background. The background is just the, anyway, but the, the hidden sort of things. And now I have these elements, which is basically just, you can see an arrow a text box I made that has one through 20 on there and then just this blue oval there. So if I delete these from the master, now if I go over here and I play this, the neat part about what you do to the master is whatever you do on one, every slide that has that master is gone. And so now you can see here, I'm playing without um, any timer on there kind of a thing. So that's kind of a nice way if you wanna be able to edit it that way. Um, all right, what's next here? There is a final, and I'll be honest with you, I play it, there's oftentimes I find myself less and less playing the final frazzle round. The final frazzle round I designed as sort of a, uh, uh, like this, sort of, um, what's that called? A relay race kind of a thing that I put all, let's say I'll only play with team one, team one at uh, first, and I had them bring me five kids, and then team two sends five outside, and the other one said five outside. And basically, this is gonna be a timed, how fast they can get these five terms or sentences or whatever, and in, all combined and such. And so um, they could be a multitude of different things. I have images or closed sentences. Let me show you what it looks like here in my frenzy frazzle thing. Do, do, do. Frenzy frazzle, explain it to them right there. And then say, okay, you fill in the, so they're all lined up here, ready, set, go, start the timer. And the kid goes, he's reading the sentence and if he can get it, he says it and he moves to the back and we go to the next one. If he can't, the next person can try to be able to get it. If the entire five can't get it, they'll ultimately pass and there's a penalty amount that's in the directions or whatever. And so that's kind of like that. You move forward one to the other. And it, if you want, you can do just these sort of fill in the blank or close sentences, or you can do something like this, where a picture is slowly gonna start to unravel and how quickly they can ultimately identify what that thing is. And that's just a timed thing that uh, uh, this big square um, 
and all you simply do if I want that, let me see if I take that picture again, here's that picture, and if I wanted to put it here, I just paste that picture, um, crop it to its shape or resize it. I'm a big fan of the crop tool to be able to kind of make that fit. So if I fit that just like that and it's sitting on top, now it's sitting there on top and I want to right click it and go to send it back. Now when I get to that spot here, you can see it's going to start to slowly, the timing's on, on this all, uh, already, and so they won't be able to get it. And you can see it adds some timers. It's, come on, come on, come on. They're saying what it is. The, the, the game's fun and because there's this often um, uh, frantic, that's kind of what we call the game, that people get frazzled in this game kind of a thing. So anyway, feel free to do that, include it, modify it, change it, whatever. And that's, and that's it in a nutshell. Here's the directions. Feel free if you want to do two rounds, you want to do more than three rounds, feel free to knock yourself out. You'll have to change what the back button link looks like. But for the most part, it's just moving forward, all that kind of stuff. There's all the directions. Now, some of you are thinking, hey, but you said Google Slides. You're right. I did say Google Slides. So let me show you that. If I bring my Google Slides in over here, I made a version for this. It's almost identical. Here is my, my frazzle thing, right? If I put this on, I even got the music playing again and then frazzle again. Am I really gonna sing the song again? Yes. Boy, he's really heard this a lot, I have, yeah. Anyway, so there's Write Your Subject, Rocks, and there it is. Sorry, and this was vocabulary on the bottom. And now, ready, here we go, team number one. Now you notice I still got the ding and I still got the frazzle, the timer's different. So you would have heard, had Igneous here, and there's my timer, timer looks clean. Like, hey, it doesn't have the movie thing, because folks, this is actually, it's a YouTube video. This is a YouTube video that I made that is 20 seconds. I had the colors match. The yellow background of my video matches the yellow background of the slide, and the blue matches the blue of the, um, of the little oval there. And it will just automatically go from one to the next. Let me move my little uh, screeny thing here, though. And so it just shows up right there, and it'll play automatically. There's a slight pause when I go from one slide to the next. It's only about a half a half a second, but for the most part, it's pretty clean and pretty tight, um, and it works quite well. At the end of those 20 seconds, in order to have times up, I just put a times up thing that lasts for like another 10 seconds, this little red emoji guy that sits on there, right? Three, two, one, times up. So the video is technically still going, I just made it last longer kind of a thing. Oh, and then you can switch and put it to the next one. So besides the timer, it's virtually identical, uh, the game from one to the next. Uh, same sort of thing here. I got the frenzy frazzle if you want to be able to include that. I made it look a little bit differently, but um, kind of thing. Anyway, that's frazzle, folks. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I'm telling you, uh, of all my games, um, it's probably the one of the ones I played the most uh, because I demo it so much because I get asked because it's absolutely super simple. Like all you really need to be able to do, like, oh, I'm doing a game on uh, Civil War and I need to be able to create a, I'm being observed today. And how can I, get, if I'm getting observed, uh, I want to play a game and everybody's seen Kahoot a bazillion times. So like. So all I'm gonna do is just take Abolitionist right there, hop back over to my Frazzle game, and right here, now I'm gonna take, be careful when you paste, because paste sometimes gets rid of the formatting, and I can just do like that, or here's a better trick, watch this. I could do double monitors, or side by side, what? If I go side by side with this guy, now I can just have this here, I go Abolitionist, Next slide's going to be, ooh, secede. Page down, next slide. That's going to be compromise. Next slide's going to be, ooh, uh, uh, states' rights. That's it. That's all you got to do, right? And all the other stuff over here on the right-hand side, that's what you can talk about when you do your review. But folks, hey, look at that. Literally, five minutes, five minutes. You take your study guide, you take your quiz, you take whatever you got, and you got your, and you got your game here. And let me show you one more time what it looks like. Now we got our finished one, Civil War. And last time, is he gonna sing the song again? Yeah, one more time. Hey everybody, we're playing Frazzle is our game. It's a Civil War and we're playing Frazzle, yeah.
All right, everybody. Hey, welcome. We're playing our game, Civil War. Break our teams our class up into three teams. All right, team number one, come on up. Our first word, first one is vocabulary. Here's some vocabulary. Move me out of the way. Uh, vocabulary, everybody, from uh, Civil War. Ready, set, team number one. Ready, set, uh, go. Here's your terms. Oh, I deleted my diary. But anyway, um, uh, these are the people who fought against slavery, uh, helped try to be able to, and an abolitionist. Nice job. Hey, and you get it, right? Super fun and easy to do. The kids are going to be asking for more Frazzle. Frazzle has been really popular at the school that I teach. Kids, uh, teachers across the uh, uh, curriculums use it, so it's really kind of neat when the kids, uh, you literally, it's kind of like a hoot now. You say, hey, we're playing Frazzle, and they all know what Frazzle is. So if you've got any questions on Frazzle, or you got some cool ideas, or you know, you want you got a better finale for the thing, please let me know. Hope you enjoy it. Everybody, I'm the game show guy Ryan, and this has been Frazzle.